Yo guys, what's good? Um, I'm just in the middle of having some breakfast. Um, the video that I'm going to show you guys today, I shot this way back in September. Um, obviously had some early setup issues, and we're still really kind of trying to get get to grips with this. Like I still am. So there's some there's some background noise in there that I couldn't really couldn't really get rid of, and I've been sitting on sitting on this video for a while. I didn't really know whether to release it or not because of that. Um, not that the stand is super high right now, but um, I wasn't sure whether I should release it or not. But I feel like it's a it's a pretty interesting story. There might be some value to take away from it. So I've decided I'm still going to share this with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Helps my channel out a lot. Thank you very much. Enjoy the video. I'm trying to think of a good intro for this video. I just can't. But screw it, man. I tried doing this video once before already in my room. I kind of felt like I was being being interviewed because my room's not exactly set up very nice. Just a stool. Me sitting up straight. I just felt like I was being interviewed. I just wasn't very comfortable when you could tell in the video. So we're in the living room. Yeah. It's not much of a backdrop. Maybe we'll work on it. Maybe we won't. This video, I kind of wanted to run. Um, this looks so stupid, I need less. More couch. Much better. Uh, this video, I kind of wanted to run, um, talk about uh, my style, professional basketball. I don't know where to start, really, like honestly. Like, uh. <laughs> okay, yeah, you guys are gonna have to bear with me because this sitting down and talking to uh, talking to a camera like not a person is way 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 harder than it looks like it's just strange so bear with me yeah so started off with um finding myself an agent he quite quickly actually got me um a tryout in second division italy really attractive offer there's only a few games left in the season i think three left and they were trying to avoid relegation so they were willing to pay like 3,000 just for those three games, so of course I'm like, yeah, I'm there. So I get on the flight, get there, and um, when I land, practice is in like four hours, four hours after I landed. I had got the call from my agent the night before that they played this weekend or whatever, but it was a late call as well, man. Maybe like 8 p.m. and then I had to be in the airport the next morning. So I spent most of the night packing. Long travel, man, long travel. Obviously packing during the night. Got to the airport for the next morning. Yeah, like I said, practice was um, four hours. So I went to, the, went, to the, went to the apartment. I just napped on a, on a nice little sofa like this. Yeah, so that guy that, that I was essentially replacing, I didn't know this at the time. I found this out later on. He was the American player, pretty uh, seasoned vet as well. Agent was clearly a seasoned vet as well because he managed to get paid for seven months. Yeah, so his agent was clearly a seasoned vet. He got paid for seven months, not eight, nine. So he didn't technically have to stay there for, um, for the entire season. So he could have had the kindness of his heart or, you know, just wanted to finish the season, finish what he started. But hey man, he got his money and was like, I'm out. So he did just that. So unbeknownst to me, they're kind of expecting a bit more of an experienced player. Not that I didn't do well, honestly. I felt like I had a really good, really, really good couple of practices. It wasn't not difficult. Um, obviously, I was, wasn't going on a lot of sleep, and it was just, just one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. But you got to adjust, man. You got to adjust because you get put in these situations, and you don't get to dictate what kind of opportunities come your way. You just have to take them, make lemonade. Yeah, but I was there for like two, three days. I out with the guys. Everyone was cool. Got on really well with everyone, and then. I remember after one practice, got a message from the government team manager telling me, yeah, we we're, we're, uh, we're not taking you. So we're gonna, you know, put you on a bus tomorrow and get you to the airport, I'm sorry. You know, I was kind of heartbroken. I really thought I nailed it. Yeah, it is what it is, man. So I got on that bus the next day and got back home. And so then it was the summer, a long summer of just not hearing anything that my agent would often give the whole 
yeah, the man I'm talking to such and such, I'm talking to such and such, such and such said this, such and such said that, whoop de whoop, but nothing's nothing tangible, just frustrating, really frustrating. And it's part of the job, honestly, man. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, just sitting and waiting for the unknown, not, you know, not knowing if you're gonna get a job, not knowing and where you're gonna end up, just the uncertainty of it all. It doesn't really get easier. You just kind of learn how to suppress it, maybe distract yourself a little bit. The universe is a cruel, uncaring void. The key to being happy isn't the search for meaning, it's to just keep yourself busy with unimportant nonsense, and eventually, you'll be dead. It doesn't get easier, I'll be honest. It hasn't necessarily for me. I've just got better at quieting in that noise. So it was a long summer. I didn't hear anything from anybody. Oh, I'm telling a lie. I'm skipping too far ahead. I've got one call from my agent. And it was to go to Slovenia first league, but again, it wasn't a job, it was a tryout. So I went, and um, as I was on my way there, my agent was telling me that I'll be going with somebody else that he's sent from his agency. Didn't think too much of it at the time. I get there and I find out it's another guard. They stick me in this guy, who's Ron, shout out Ron man. Um, yeah, they stick me and Ron in, um, in a hostel not an apartment or anything, they said, yeah, this is just where you, we're going to keep you until uh, we decide to take you on. It wasn't great. Mm, our beds were probably this far apart. Like, we could damn near touch each other. Um, phrasing? It was not ideal. Not ideal at all. We didn't have anywhere to cook. The food that they gave us at this hostel was hostel food. Like, it didn't feel like hostel food. It felt like prison, like, Oh, concentration camp F. <laughs> We've been dramatic, man. Um, yeah, but I just remember this given. They give this given us these Frankfurt, these Frankfurt sausages in just a bowl of greasy, greasy soup. And me and Ron just look at each other, just like, no, bro, this ain't it. We gotta go find somewhere else to eat. So what we did for food most of the time, we just there's a little too far and we just go eat mad cereal and cereal bars and whatever we could get because there's no there's no oven or anything again me and Ron shout the Ron again man we 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 killed it I'm not gonna lie we killed it we we did our thing this is dope man like we play really well together you're killing I'm killing like this will be fun like there's no way we don't get this job but back to like sort of how fishy that whole situation was during practice we would never really play together all that often. We'd be really aware that we played together. I, mean, I would always sub for him, he would always sub for me, and kind of like that. And we sat back and looked at him, it was like, yeah, that's a little bit weird. Like, if they're thinking about taking both of us, they'd want to see us play together a little bit more. But yeah, we figured we was competing for this job, which again, was screwed up because we had the same agent. We, we wish the best for each other. We want to see everyone win, really. But we're looking at our agent kind of crazy, like, I, 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 you know, man. You know, he's almost doubling down. Something is very, very small. Um, you can get up and down it in, in a day really, really easily. Um, so, yeah, we meet him in Ljubljana and we talk to him. I remember, I remember we was just at a bar and just like, yeah, man, this, this, this is, what's the deal? What, what are you doing? What's good? And, hey, man, Asians, um, this, this is, this is not, not a broad stroke, man. Not a broad stroke at all. I am out here for you. Well, shout out my guys. Uh, Really like, really loving the agency I'm working with at the moment, but um, it's a sketchy business, man. You got a lot of car salesmen, a lot of car salesmen in that business. You got to learn to filter out the bullshit. And yeah, he just gave us a load of bullshit. Just a load of gas, man. He was just flapping his gums. But anywho. And then when we were getting ready to start the new week, the coach comes up to us and he's just like. He didn't speak great English either, but in the best way he could. That's why there's this, this huge lack of communication all week. But he eventually, he, he, he conveyed to us that they were, they were, they really liked us and they wished they could sign us, but unfortunately, they're full at the guard spot. Like, they don't need any guards. They're actually looking for forks. So we kind of looked at each other just like, I mean, you could have told us that as soon as we came through the door, me and me and Ronno, about six foot four, and we're back at the hostel, mad. And oh, I didn't mention 
Wi-Fi at this place. Consistently had one bar. Consistently. Just basically no Wi-Fi. Basically no Wi-Fi. Spend 15 minutes trying to connect just to get one bar. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Spent a lot of money on data that week. Yeah, so we're at the hostel and we're kind of fuming and mom was mad, mad. I'm a young rookie. I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. No one tells you how you should be having conversations with your agent or anything like that, but he's, he, he's, he's a bit more into this than me. So he's on the phone and he's, he's livid, man. So again, <laughs> our agent, he tells Ron that don't worry, he's got some other things lined up for him. If they come through, he'll fly him out straight from Slovenia to wherever he needs to go. He says to me, similar thing, but in Slovenia, he's just like, okay, okay, just like, you know, just give me a couple of days, give me a couple of days, I'm working on some stuff. So me and Ron hang out for um, the next two days together in this hostel. Yeah, just wandering around, looking for restaurants to eat at and stuff, because Lord knows the hostel food wasn't cutting it. I don't remember <laughs> rightly, I'm pretty sure they weren't like, letting us get that anymore. They were just like, letting us stay at the hostel out of courtesy. And obviously there's not a lot to do, so we have had some very deep conversations, which is one of my favorite things about playing basketball overseas. Honestly, it's the people you meet. Um, you can just get into some awesome debates because you have people who are obviously from a completely different part of the world, a completely different way of living and you know, you've never seen perspectives from their side before and you learn different things from them and their own life experience and why they are the way they are. So yeah, these two days go by, Ron's back on the phone with our agent and he's saying to Ron, like, look, I'm going to send you back to France, it's going to pan out. So I was like, okay, it's whatever. Josh, I'm still working on some, some other stuff in uh, Ljubljana, you know. Lucky me, he gets to stay in this hostel for maybe an additional three, four days with very, very minimal Wi-Fi. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. Yeah, the day finally comes where I get to leave and I remember my agent called, calling me the next day after I tell him I'm back and everything. Okay, like I'm still talking to this team in Slovenia. Um, you know, if, if, if they decide they want to see you, I'll fly you back out. And I'll remember just going, bruh. No way. I'm done with Slovenia. You should, you should have sorted all that before. I'm not going back. I'm done. I'm staying here. This is like September time, man. <laughs> so it's pre season, too. People are starting to, like, people are pretty much all signed up and stuff. Obviously, man, the neurosis set is set in. Not really fun. I'm worrying about if this is if I made the right choice, but lo and behold, my uh, my old coach, Lloyd Gardner, then calls me. He uh, tells me about Surrey, and as apprehensive as I was maybe at first. No offense to the league. No, it's not, it's not offensive. It's, it's bad. It's not really known as a league to to be a springboard for for, for younger players. It, it, for that, developing younger players and, and then ending up in higher leagues, which is ultimately which I believe for myself is possible. I believe I can play at a higher level. So as apprehensive as I was at first, I wasn't definitely definitely wasn't close minded to it. I knew I just needed an, an opportunity. It didn't matter. I could I could make I could make something shake whatever I was. I, I genuinely believe that. So I went to Surrey. So I went to Surrey, oh, again on a trial essentially, and met Creon and Teo and everyone there at the time. Yeah, signed on the dotted line and I finally got my first job. I just remember, I remember just the feeling of absolute relief when you know, he told me he would like to offer me. Yeah, I had a great rookie year. It's, it's been my favorite year so far, man. Honestly, I loved, I loved my teammates that were there. I had a really, it was just a, like the older guys as well that were there. I still talk to a lot of those guys on that team. Very fun year, had a lot of fun. So it was a great way to start off, despite all the other all the other stuff that happened before. It was all worth it in the end. Yeah, I want to do a little bit more than just vlogging. I feel like vlogging's really cool, but I want to give a little bit more, man. Like I've, I've been playing for, this will be my fourth season, and I've got a little bit of experience. There's no manual for this stuff, man. There's no linear progression. There isn't any with anything in life, but there really isn't. And this is the 
going into unmarked territory a lot of the time. You have to learn as you go along. So anything that I've learned, I want to be able to sort of just give uh, some experience back because I've, I've had a unique experience of being, being both, developing both in the States and at home in the BBL and then going into Europe from that. So I've got my own little wealth of experience. I'd love to be able to give some of that back. Let me know in the comments or on my Instagram anything you want to you want to talk about on here, man. Apologies for maybe the uh, low tier uh, quality at the moment of this channel. Like, as you can see, I'm literally just working with what I have. Um, we got no soundproofing, so all the noise and exterior stuff you hear from is uh, coming from this window out there. But we'll work on it, man. We'll work on it. We'll get there. <laughs> it's gonna have that authentic feel. That's what it's gonna be, man. Coming at you raw. Uh, phrasing. Please like and subscribe to this channel. It would really help me out. Share with your friends. Subscribe to Moses' channel and Callum's channel. They're putting out their own their good stuff in their own right. Also, let me know in the comments any other topics you want me to talk about, anything you want to see on my blogs. Yeah, thanks for listening. Keep it real.